Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Jess. Sorry, um, the lighting is way off, but I just had a burst of inspiration to make a video, so I thought, why not? And I'm not wearing makeup. I literally look like trash. I just ate some coffee and biscuits, so I just, like, need to get my thoughts out there. So I'm going to make a video, and I know you guys, we're kind of like bag chat friends, so I want to know your thoughts about my current thoughts. <laughs> my th Your thoughts about my thoughts. Anyway... I've been reflecting on my um, handbag shopping over the last, like, literally month or so, especially in lockdown, and I'm gonna admit, guys, like, I feel like I've made some uh, really spontaneous purchases, and I've been really sucked into watching a lot of handbag videos and being influenced by them, and I wanted to, like, I guess, let you guys know, th like, I guess, mistakes I think I've made, um over the past year or two in terms of buying handbags and maybe you'd find it useful yourself and maybe you can identify with some of these mistakes as well. So number one, I would recommend to you guys not to get too influenced by other people on the internet and other people's handbag collections, including my own, because I always think that... Uh, you know, there's people out there like Claire Chanel and Lydia Lise Millen and, you know, all the handbag um, goddesses of YouTube who have like the most epic um, taste in fashion. And I feel like a lot of people on the internet definitely get influenced by them. It's what they're paid to do. And people go out and buy bags that they have and then realize maybe they just liked them because they liked them. <clears throat> and there's nothing wrong with that, guys. But I find that if you just hone in on things that you like and, like, not what other people like, you'll probably love that bag even more than what you thought. For myself, I found most of the bags that I like the most are bags that not many people have really mentioned before. And I don't know if that's just me, but I think that it's because I was drawn to it myself because I could imagine myself wearing it and it was right for my lifestyle. So an example of that is probably my Gabrielle backpack. Where is that? Oh yeah, like here. I didn't really see many people when I bought this. I hadn't really seen anyone like talk about it. But I bought it because I knew it would suit my style. It's still one of my favorite bags in my collection. And then a bag which I'm kind of like on the fence about, and this is one that I bought in lockdown, is my <laughs> Chanel 2.55 in small. And I'm actually like, literally today I was like thinking, even though I've only had it for like two weeks, I'm also kind of thinking like, I don't actually even know if this is my style. I bought it because it's a classic Chanel and it's timeless and it literally will never go out of style. But then a part of me thinks it's not really me. And I don't know. Similar thing. I know you guys are going to be shook by this. But even my Kelly bag. I think I bought that because honestly on YouTube. Like people are going crazy for Birkins and Kelly. So I just really wanted to buy into the hype. And I've not even worn that yet. So there's a part of me that thinks... You know, don't get too sucked into what other people's saying on YouTube because it's not, like, it, it's just not your, like, it might not be your style at all. Like, try and find things that you like. Like, I mean, my pink Pinkerton, that was something that I just randomly found, like, three years ago, and I still love that bag. So, anyway, next I would say, next mistake, number two. Don't get, don't feel like you have to collect everything so what I mean by that is I remember many years ago watching Mel in Mel Mel in Melbourne's video about all the Chanel sizes so she was comparing mini with small with medium with jumbo and that honestly made me want to collect every single size of Chanel bag and guys look look what has happened yeah so did I need to do that guys well what I found for me is I actually probably like the I do like probably the mini and the the I do like mini small and medium to be honest but there is sometimes this temptation in me to buy the jumbo just like save up and buy like a vintage Chanel jumbo 
And knowing me, I don't think I'm going to wear a jumbo, but I just want to collect all the sizes. And I think that is a mistake, guys. Same with, like, the Speedy. I was thinking once I get the Speedy 20, if I do, that means I should also get a Speedy 25 and a, and a mini Speedy and a Speedy 30. Like, you don't have to do that, guys. Just try and stick to the size that you think will suit you. And that's why I'm also thinking, like, with my Cali 28, should I have just sold it and get, like, what I actually want, which is, like, either a Birkin 25 or a Kelly 25? Like, a part of me just wants to keep the Kelly 28 and then also get a Kelly 25 and a Birkin 25 in the future, but I don't think that's ideal, guys. You should just go for the size that you love the most, and I really didn't think that I needed to buy all, the, like, literally, I've got a square, mini, a rectangle, a small, and a medium. I don't think it's necessary, guys. You just save yourself some money and just try and work out the size maybe get two sizes max but i don't think you need to collect every single size of a certain style um number three don't be afraid to explore like i actually love finding pre-loved deals on ebay and even like vestiaire and stuff and sometimes you can find some real gems for absolute bargain and, and some people will say like you know guys don't get distracted by little things like bargains but honestly guys some of my best bags have been bargains like lately I have been wearing that Alba bag up there which I got for $700 like a lot and I only bought that because it was a bargain but because it was like relatively affordable I don't feel so guilty about it and I found that it's actually a really cute bag and not many people have it Another one of those examples is recently I got this little Mademoiselle bag. I've already worn it like around the neighborhood and stuff and that was also like $700 which is like not cheap but it was something I discovered on the pre-love market and um, not many people have been talking about it so I think it's okay to like open up your options because like I don't know like now that's kind of like filled I don't know like I don't really need any more, like, the little cute Chanel shoulder bags because I've got, like, that. Like, I don't know. I just feel like you can sometimes find some things pre-loved for really good deals and it's actually better than just saving up and spending, like, thousands of dollars of it on a new bag. Like, you might actually find that you like the bargain bag more. Um, not always, but sometimes you can. So I think it's okay to explore and see the other options out there. Um, don't buy colours... So this is number four, don't buy colors or sizes that you don't love. So, for example, if you get offered a Kelly 32 in pink and you don't like pink or size 32 and you just feel honored to get it and you take it, like, don't do that, guys. <laughs> like, And I would say same for my Kelly. Like, I thought I would really love it because it's green and it's 28, which is, it's pretty, like, classic. But honestly, guys, if I could just have one Kelly, it would probably be, like, a black size 25. Like, I just think I would wear that way more. And the 25 kind of suits my frame a little bit more. So, that's kind of, like, what I'm thinking. Like, should I have just settled? Like, it's a really expensive bag. And same for Chanel flaps, guys. Like, if you want, if you got your heart set on, like, caviar and you're going to get lambskin, don't do that. And vice versa. Don't settle for the wrong color or size because... You're just going to not wear it as much as you thought and you're going to force yourself to wear it and it's just, you're just going to end up wanting to get the other thing anyway. And lastly, guys, I would say don't force yourself to buy colours if you don't like colours. Some people feel bad because they only buy black bags, but honestly, guys, like black bags are like the safest and probably best option if you like being safe because black bags... One, they are easier to maintain. Two, they go with everything. Well, probably not everything. I guess summer can be a bit heavy, but... Um, and three, they just, they're just going to last longer and they tend to be the most popular if you do want to sell it in the future. Like a black Chanel bag, like it's going to be probably easier to sell than a red one, to be honest, even though I personally love red. If you don't like red, guys 
don't settle for that color like get what you want and I know when I was buying my black mini rectangle I got offered other colors and I said no because I didn't think I was going to keep buying Chanel bags like I am now and I knew that the black was just the safest and best option and the best investment in my wardrobe and I wouldn't be so scared about getting it dirty because you can't see the dirt <clears throat> and <clears throat> sorry guys and I think yeah, you can't go wrong with black, guys. Like, personally, I think black, if you love black, go for black. So anyway, guys, that were my thoughts of the day. I hope you enjoyed my random video, and I know I'm not wearing makeup, so I don't look as glam as I could, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!